Welcome to the Welsh Yogi Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the Welsh Yogi Podcast. Um, a little bit of a different episode today, actually. We are on the road. We're out in Oxford City. Um, we've just driven here. It's a bit late at night, but we're... Yeah. Um, it's about two and a half hours if, if, if you just <laughs> If you just be quiet, I'll, intro- <laughs> I'll introduce you now. So if you just keep... So we're... Um, <laughs> shh, no laughing, even. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so, um, so yeah, we're we're on a little book distribution distribution journey. So if you don't know, as monks, we like to spend a lot of our time uh, going town to town, uh, giving people spiritual wisdom, and it's actually um, a very rewarding activity, and it dates back thousands and thousands of years. Um, you you always hear about like these monks that would go door to door, and they would um, they'd sort of go with their little begging bowl. And they beg some alms, some bit of rice or some food, and in return they'd they'd exchange that for spiritual wisdom, and it's kind of that tradition's continued. Only now we beg for donations in the form of of like a monetary donations, and then we give spiritual wisdom in the form of like li- literature. Mm. But it is the same principle, and um, you can talk now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, we're we're joined oh, no. we're joined by Ollie. Hi there, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, Ollie, or known as Back to Ollie, and... Um, how old are you, Ollie? I'm 22. 22. 22. And how, you've been, you've been a monk for three years now? Yeah, yeah, basically, like, almost three years, like, I, I joined, I believe it was, like, just after my birthday, so when I became 20, mm. um, so it must be, like, April, but I'd, I'd, I'd been around, like, in the community for, like, Maybe like six months or so, six seven months. Yeah, and you've been living in um, the contemporary Vedic ashram, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's when that's when I moved into the ashram. So, so could you explain that? Because people might be interested in in T Krishna in Wales. We've actually got two monk ashrams. One is like a contemporary ashram, and one is like a like a more sort of SAS, yeah, hardcore yeah, yeah. ashram. And you've been you've been going through the CVA. How would you explain CVA. what the CVA is? Yeah, like the the CVA is like a place where kind of um, people newer to the practices of you know of Bhakti Yoga, and they can you know about people who are you know you know fairly kind of serious about spiritual uh, advancement or um, progression that they can you know have a a place to live and practice along with like like-minded people because mm. that environment is so conducive you know who we who we associate with who we're like friends with and you know who we who we you know on a day-to-day basis that affects our consciousness all the time so when we're you know with you know like-minded people then we can really grow together mm. um and yeah and you know go pal obviously you know yeah, who everyone here knows yeah. he's the he's actually the the he um he's the leader he's a leader yeah he's a leader of the cva so you know he trains all the boys up yeah you know he really like he's a really great teacher mm. a really really like it's like a wealth of knowledge yeah you know? and just able to to give really good guidance and just see where you know where you are and kind of how you can progress yeah and so he runs the contemporary Vedic the CVA mm. with Gopi Gita. Mm. If you've been to the Atma Lounge, you know Gopi Gita well. Two amazing souls, mm. and it's like it's like a it's like a nice family. And the CVA yeah, is like, it's, really nice. it's an environment where you could you know we've got people come the university students and they practice spiritual life. Mm. You got you know potential for people who work. Yeah. You know, there's different different options, but. Then some people who are aspiring to be full time SAS hardcore mm. orange monks, also, yeah. and that's what you are, right? Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I'm a sp- yeah. So we just Planted. heard we've heard that you're potentially going to be going into orange, right? Yeah. Yeah. So very soon you won't be seeing because people sometimes ask like, what's the significance of why do some of you wear white? Some why do some of you wear orange? Hmm. Why why are they? <laughs> yeah, I mean like traditionally like. 
you know, it, there wouldn't be a white before orange traditionally. Mm. Um, you know, traditionally white would mean that you're in the um, ashram where you're, you, you know, you're married. You know, you have a wife. You know, you has, have a husband. Mm. Um, and then saffron or orange would be, you know, you're you're either a student monk or you're like a full time monk. You yeah. know, a f- f- you know, a grown up monk. Yeah, renunciant. I've also so, heard that like the color saffron is the least attractive. To the female. Really, I yeah. know it. <laughs> so that's why that's oh, that's like that's a, interesting. A, a, one of the reasons. It, it, you know, it's funny though because like you're saying that it's like you know to wear orange. You know, like you don't see many people wearing or- orange. You know, fashion. Mm. At least I, you know, I don't. I haven't uh, seen that much. So actually, there is someone yeah. in um, Port Albert. In Port Albert, we've got a. Um, he's kind of a famous person in Port Albert. I'm from Port Albert. His name is Captain Beanie. Oh, yeah. You heard of Captain Beanie? Yeah. So Captain Beanie, he he's um he's he loves Heinz baked beans and um Oh I've heard of him. Heard of him. <laughs> he wears a cape, he dresses up as a bean. Yeah. He's got Heinz baked beans tattooed all over his head. Yeah. And he's got the, the the I think the biggest Heinz baked bean museum in his house. Mm. Very um you know, cl- classic Port Albert um mm. personality. So for him, Orange is and I, I'm pretty sure not many women are attracted to mm. Captain Beanie. You never know. Maybe not. <laughs> I, I don't want to be harsh to the fella. <laughs> He's got his passion. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so you're you're potentially going to be going into saffron. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, like you know, like we were saying, so like the reason why we wear white is just you know, it's just for the kind of uh, newer practitioners and back to mm. yoga. And then, yeah, saffron. It's interesting how different uniforms and different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what? I don't know what we could talk about. There's no real plan. We've um, we just thought we'd get the the podcast going, see what happens, see if the magic comes out. Um, I was wondering, like, what got you into this, Ollie? Hmm? Maybe we could just start talking yeah, about you, yeah, because yeah. you're you're a subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? Um thinking so hmm where can I start so like um, I'm just thinking like okay you've been a monk for three years yeah before you was a monk because this is when I first met you and mm. when we met we both had hair right yeah yeah I had like long curly like hair a, like a fringe kind of thing yeah yeah or like a comb over I remember you I remember we talking like um we went because Ollie would come to meditations I'd already been coming for like six months when he started coming Mm. And I was my my mind was set on like okay I'm I'm going into an ashram into this ashram mm. I'm going to try being a monk you know it was just a matter of time for me and all I used to come to the kirtan meditation and I remember I used to lay down on the floor <laughs> <laughs> I used to lay down you, no one lays down in the kirtan but Ollie would just sit there yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was talking about all his chakras <laughs> like he was really into his like um, oh yeah I've got this energy in me and uh, it's flowing and. This mm-hmm. kind of stuff, Kundalini. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And Ollie was yeah, like, so, you know all that stuff. You know was was going on. You know it wasn't like I was making it up. <laughs> it was like a, it was a, it was a real kind of reality for me. So it was like, you know, how do I deal with all these things that are happening? Mm. You know? What deal with what kind of things? So yeah, you know, you know, like you're saying, like um, you know, you know, people might have heard like, oh, you know, there's. You know, everything's made of energy you know mm. this whole world is you know just energy and then you know we can see you know like our physical body um you know made of the different elements but then like the yoga teachings they describe actually like be like uh within the the physical body we have this kind of subtle subtle body you know which is like um you know you don't necessarily uh see it but you can you know, some people, you know, who are maybe like more sensitive to what's going on within, they can they can actually feel it, you know, different kind of, you know, like in, in Chinese medicine, was it? it's like qi, you got qi, yeah. you know, and it's like this kind of, uh, some people call it prana or like life air and all these different things going on. Basically, like the subtle mechanics of, you know, mm. of the system, the mm. body system. So like... Um, so yeah, you know, like um, when I first started meditation, which was like when I was like six, maybe sixteen, seventeen, 
So like five, six years ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, I only started doing like maybe like five, ten minutes a day, you know, because I heard, oh yeah, this is, you know, it's a good thing to do, you know, more peace, you know, you can actually, you know, initially I actually did it because I, you know, I thought, you know, oh, I could be, you know, more equipoise, more more attractive, you know, it's kind of like material reasons for, for doing yeah, it. And, yeah. um, but I just, you know, started doing like day, you know, day after day. Mm. And then it just opened a whole door of like, okay, wait, hold on a minute. You know, who am I? Who's the one who is like meditating? Do you know what I mean? It's like, mm. is this whole existential um, kind of uh, crisis or, um, y- you know, yearning, you could say, that was going on. Like, who, who, who is the one experiencing? Because I could, I could understand, okay, wait, so the, the experiencer or the, you know, as people put, like in today's time, it's like the observer is different from the thing that's being observed, you know. So I was I was very kind of like that, you know, like mm. kind of philosophical, kind of like, you know, introspective looking, kind of okay, what do I really want in life, you know? Mm. Do I? Because I was like, and this is like age sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, I went through like phase of like you know bodybuilding, and you know I'd go quite intense, you know, when in different things that I do, I had that kind of nature about me, mm. you know, like whatever whatever I did, I'd kind of. Fully go familiar. for it yeah, yeah go for it what's it called um, full send yeah yeah <laughs> something like that <laughs> but um, yeah you know I, I just realised you know all these things you know why do I want to do bodybuilding is because okay there's something um, you know within that I'm you know maybe not quite um, like content with you know dissatisfaction within so I'm trying to you know find this fulfilment from you know how I look. Mm. You know, so it's like, and yeah, you know, it's like a. It doesn't actually fulfill you because these bodies are like, you know, they. It's not who. It's not who we actually are. So you know, we try and you know change change different things, but ultimately it doesn't actually like fill that gap that we're looking for. So anyway, that kind of led me to get into meditation and. And then, yeah, like, I, I just remember, like... So, like, because I remember, I've seen pictures of you in your bodybuilding prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bit of a tank, bit of a <laughs> bit of a juicy boy, like. Yeah. So, you you obviously achieved something within that region because yeah, you got, that, say, determi- yeah. You yeah, got yeah, that determination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, with that achievement, then you, you had that point where it's like, oh, okay, I'm still, I'm not happy. I've got the guns. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got the six-pack, whatever it is. It's put quite early on, like, hmm. now what, you know? Yeah, like, you know... You, you you pretty much done everything you know you've you know you, you you know you've like you know studied you've you've you know done lots of exercise you know gym you know like party um, was a bit of a party part, yeah I used, I used to go to lots of parties festivals you know um you know drink smoke you know all the rest you know and it's like still you know there's like I guess still okay so <laughs> been doing this for long you know been doing this you know a while now and it's just you're trying to chase the kind of feeling that never really is you know lasting or it's just it's so like minuscule you know it's like there's not it's there's not really smoke. any substance you know mm. so so yeah it's, it's, it really does and I think a lot of people can relate to that you know that there's you know you know where is it where is that mm. kind of fulfillment that we're looking for so you, so like, you got into meditation and you said because you said this door started to open. Where, where yeah. did it go from there? So ten minutes a so day. So well, I was at that time. I was looking a lot into like you know this you know those like so called self help books, um, even like kind of you know you know spiritual books, new age kind of stuff, um, even like I got told you know like Pals now you know yeah like okay you know, the present moment all all of this kind of mindfulness things mm. even like breath work that was that was interesting actually you know like holotrophic like holotrophic holo- holo- breathing and like Wim Hof like? method <laughs> yeah yeah and then like if you do that enough it's like you can actually like I never actually did it did that fully but like if you with the power of the breath you can actually like reach these states of consciousness where it's like 
you know, you're almost like tripping out, you know, from yeah. from the kind of chemicals released. Yeah, there's like a DMT kind that, of yeah, that's experience. like that's like a trippy one. But then like Wim Hof is like with the breath, then you can actually bring your consciousness into a state of mind where you can, you know, uh, like tolerate extreme yeah. temperatures. You know, he goes into like you know rivers and you know yeah. for long periods of time and you know and this is what the yogis would do you know yeah. they because they 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 know the power of breath and of the mind yeah you can there's like mystic yogis that that control their breath oh yeah i've heard yeah. stories you know indra Dhyuma swami oh yeah he was um he was up in the himalayan mountains he's a swami in the Hare krishna movement and he um he does like these cool adventures where he goes to like holy places himalayan mountains forests jungles wherever He's probably like 60 or 70 now, you know, but he still does these things. But he was walking up in, in the uh, Himalayan mountains and there was like this mystic kind of yogi guy mm. walking towards him. And he was just wearing like a loincloth, you know, like just yeah, something yeah. around here, yeah. barefoot in the middle of this snow. And Indra Numa Swami, he was saying that he had his full North Face jacket, mm. fur, you oh, know, yeah. like he was completely covered. And this mystic yoga, yogi had, was, was, just wearing his bare feet and apparently he stopped and he offered his respects because they're both saintly holy people you know and they had this interesting conversation he said the conversation lasted about five minutes and by the end of the conversation he looked down and where the yogi was standing it was rock like he'd melted 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 all the snow and all the ice so he was using some kind of like internal and that's what the vedas there's there's whole methods and systems for like controlling the physical elements of the yeah, body yeah. like um and it, it's very very kind of detailed so you were starting to sort of delve into the surface level of those kinds of ideas kind of yeah because like like Wim, uh, Wim Hof is an entry into that you know? yeah because it was it was when I started looking in the breath work and I noticed like okay um there's something off with my breathing you know I noticed that uh, because I you know in, in meditation I recommend kind of be mindful of what's going on within and so I'd bring my awareness within, you know, within the body. And then I'd kind of, I could notice this tightness mm. around the solar plexus area. And then I'd, I was doing, I remember I was like either lying on my bed or sitting on my bed. And I was doing this like uh, breathing or just not even like an exercise, but just trying to relax within. Relax this. It almost seemed like there was like a, something caught in the middle of it by the, you know, the diaphragm, which is, which controls the breathing. And then I just brought my attention more and more to it. And, I, and then it just, I started feeling this like tingly, tingly burning sensation inside, which is really weird, you know, like if you said that to the doctor, you'd probably, like, yeah. <laughs> you know was, what's going Was on. it like a physical or are you talking about? It felt physical, but, but it, it actually, I don't think it was. Like it felt very physical, but it was, you know, it must have been more subtle in the mind. But, um, the more I kind of brought my attention to this, then it started to grow and grow. And then with my awareness, I could kind of feel it and almost like, almost like move it or like direct Mm. it in some way. And then this kind of transpired more and more. And I don't know how long I was doing this for, maybe half an hour, an hour. And then I I felt this kind of like, kind of shift. And then like this whole like, almost like electrical or like a really like, tingly but like with a lot of pressure going upwards over here in my solar plexus and I felt this kind of like ball of kind of um you know I say energy but that's just a way to describe it is this yeah this feeling prana like, yeah yeah I don't know I, I don't know what to call it but anyway then it started just like really going up like up my spine mm. up and down and like uh, really trying to push through and even like you know, talking about chakras, when it got to the heart area, I felt, it almost felt like there was a block in the mm. way, you know, and it was almost, you know, if you've ever, like, played Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, and you hit the, you know, <laughs> no, there's a, <laughs> never played it, sorry. Well, <laughs> you're gonna have to explain. There's, like, these fire hydrants in America, you know, it's, oh, like, yeah. red things, and then if you hit it with a car or something, then it the bursts water. open, and it's, like, psh, a hose of water just comes up, yeah. and it felt like that, like, it was a really, really powerful surge trying to move up you know like and I, I I didn't I actually didn't know anything was going on at this time you know I didn't know about so much about like chakras or any kind of 
mm. anything like this. So it was all quite a surprise to me. Like, what is going on? Wait, this manifests out, out of some breathwork meditation. Yeah, yeah, literally just just bring awareness in and just trying to relax and just see what's going on inside. And then, yeah, just over the kind of... Um, the day I was like, oh, what? I don't know what's going on. I was trying to, you know, look up, you know, yeah. if anyone had any similar experiences online. Mm. And um, yeah, it was just like really, really like, um, what's the word? Tangible experience. Okay, I'm not making this up. There's something going on. It seems to be like in line with all these centers that, you know, that I talked about in the yoga teachings and the, you know, um, in even like new age you know, spirituality. Was this, was this was before you were at uni? This was, yeah, this was before uni. This was gym. I took a year so, out before university. So on your gap year? Gap year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, that's, it wasn't like that. And me. what was the, what setting? And I, I, I'm a bit, I like to visualise. Setting? Where are you? So I'm in my house in South, Lon- South London. Yeah. That's um, where, you're from, where you're from, yeah? I'm from Watford, so North London, but okay. my mum moved to South London. Okay. okay. She's with her partner there, so oh, we were nice. staying at his house in my bedroom and I'm just trying to picture myself as well candles um, no no candles just, no. You know, just like it's a lad like kind of yeah I mean I was into meditation at that point like really like really searching actually um, you know because I was getting more into this you know um, f- uh, mindfulness awareness uh, consciousness mm. and then this really just blew things you know all the way up you know and um, anyway, I, I was looking online and I found, okay, yeah, there's people having these experiences. Not just me. I'm not going mad, you know. And this, some of these, you know, accounts seem to be very similar to what I'm experiencing. You know, they call it Kundalini Awakening. You know, mm-hmm. that was the name that people called it. And um, anyway, I, I remember I even tried to get in contact with some people, messaging people on Facebook. And mm-hmm. what's going on? You know, like, you meet people that have had this on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah, yeah, they yeah, come up to you and like, Oh, I've had a Kundalini awakening, and I'm just like, oh, no. okay, nice. I, I can't so, relate to it. Yeah, yeah. It's like one it of those sounds things. like a very powerful, and intense. I, I wouldn't have been able to relate to it if you know if yeah. someone if it didn't really happen to me as well. And you know, I've heard that you know it varies with different people. Some I wonder. More. Sorry to cut, but yeah, like, I always used to get like a lot of anxiety in my heart area. Mm. Is that to do with that? Like, what I'd feel like this almost like a grip on my heart. Like, I'm 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 no expert, but yeah. like you know, it's it's like, you know, prana or the kind of airs within the body. You know, I could see how it's related yeah. to different emotions, and you know, they're like different energies. In it feels the like body. blockages. Or yeah, like you some know, so like in some sense, we can you know relate a little bit to like you know in, sen- in the sense of emotions. You know, you have different emotions. Some emotions feel heavier than others. Mm. You know, you might feel angry, and then your body might you know you might feel a bit like. Or you might just feel a bit spaced out, and then other emotions might feel a bit more like, you know, mode of goodness. You know, yeah. a bit more like lighter. And I think it's quite interest, interesting because you said that it took you stopping and paying attention. Yeah. To see, because yeah. for me, I've never really stopped and paid attention yeah. to like my body or like I tried meditation. I was just like, ah, oh, it's too much. Like it's yeah, yes. A lot of people have that experience with meditation. You ask, have you tried meditation? No, it's not for me. I, I can't do it. I can't mm. focus. So, like, to get to that point where you are, you know, it takes mm. a certain level of determination. I think so, yeah. So, yeah, and it, I guess it's it's mm. happening to all of us, these different, like, life airs. Yeah, you know, whether we, we're, you know, conscious of yeah. it or not. So, so, so like, um, tr- bringing your attention to it. So then from this point, because you, you said you had some struggles, like, with the whole Kundalini. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was really intense, like, that initial kind of you could call like uh, awakening or mm. whatever you want to call it Let's go with that. awareness awakening cool so then like or you could call it the spider man the amazing spider man fire hydrant <laughs> yeah that's whatever. a good name but like sorry <laughs> for the next like two weeks it was like really like quite intense I remember I actually had exams during that period for G- yeah for A level A level exams like oh, or that this happened like you know before my last few last exams and then I couldn't couldn't really sleep so well it was really like yeah. you know I was really like uh, confused what's going on it's like opened a whole new oh yeah and then I could you know I could I it was more sensitive to all the different kind of um, energies going you know flowing through the subtle body 
and um, and yeah, there was even points when I, I remember I was just like almost shaking on the ground. You know, my dad. This is at my dad's house now, um, and just like this this kind of pressure was just really trying to go through. And it was almost like I had to kind of just surrender to stop because it was it was really it was almost like painful. You know, it's yeah. it, painful. So it's like a like a blocked pipe. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. Mm. And you hear, you know, and from what I heard, you know, on the on the on Facebook, you know, different people people's experiences, you know, some people can it can actually you know relieve them to go really like crazy, yeah, yeah, like because they don't know what's going on. You know, you go to the hospital, they won't really you, you know, can't observe it. No, yeah, they won't really be able to explain it so mm. yeah mm. sorry we just had a pop-up on the yeah. computer <laughs> no so, so so you finished your A-levels yeah gap year because I, re- I retook retook oh, okay. my A-levels so you had a gap, gap year, year but yeah, you also yeah. resat some exams yeah because yeah. then after that 19 years old yeah. Cardiff Uni yeah what was going on you? Yeah, so I was, I was, I did some computer science course, well, online course, course while I was, I was during my gap year. Um, initially, I wanted to do maths or something like that, but then I thought, you know, maybe computer science. And then I, I got to Cardiff Uni to do computer science, but then by that time, you know, what made I you, was, just a quick, what made you choose Cardiff? Was Cardiff? It, was it like an arrangement or some kind of? I don't know, like. A lot of my friends were going there, but I didn't. I actually wanted to go to Bristol, but then I think, you know, I just, I just about didn't get the grades to get in. I think I got like A B B, but you needed A A B. You know? This is the subtle brag that is. A B B is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, but for the course I wanted to do, <laughs> actually, you know, in, if you need in, quite the good school I went to, like, you know, a lot of people would get A A A's. You know? yeah, it, was, yeah. it was like a grammar school. Yeah, the schools I was at were like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not not so. Yeah. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's not about me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what was you saying? So you you went to Cardiff to do computer science. Yeah, but because because that's why I chose initially. But then I had that whole experience, and I was like, okay, hold on, you know, I my life is you know it's got to be there's got to be more to life than than you know just trying to get a job and um, you know trying to make lots of money. You know, I was like my life is clearly kind of being directed towards something deeper and it makes sense you know there's you know like there's got to be more to life than you know just a you know typical kind of nine to five and just kind of the rat race going, yeah rat race you know so then I, I swapped over to philosophy but you know because I really wanted to explore this more you know my experiences um, but I did kind of have the you know awareness that philosophy might not be like um, as deep as I want to go because really me- I've seen meditation these yoga teachings are where it's at you know this mm. is where like you know what I'm experiencing and what you know what um, what kinds of things were you, like, were you being taught in philosophy philosophy so like I, I is it like first, West? it was just like introductory so it was like yeah you know West it's all philosophy. western philosophies Greek like uh okay, yeah like Plato's. Plato yeah I like that stuff. Um, some of it is yeah is is, is interesting mm. you know Plato in the cave you know yeah that like, cause that's, the light in, that that Plato's yeah. cave is relevant because like because yeah. that that Kundalini awakening that experience you said it sometimes causes people to go crazy mm. um, and Plato's allegory of a cave if people don't know it's basically like the story of um, someone having a spiritual awakening. Hmm. So basically, yeah. how it takes place is there's um there's people yeah. chained into a cave, and they're um they're locked in there, and from what I heard of it, there's there's like a fire, and you've got these people that are like holding up different shapes, yeah. and those shapes are being projected onto the wall in front of these people, in the cave, and they and these people they're sit they're sat there chained, and they become mesmerized by these moving shapes yeah. which are on the wall. Oh, and they start giving these shapes names. Names, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, that's a bird. This is a, this is a chair. This is a, 
and they they become very in, entrenched in their language, like discussing. Oh, did you see yesterday they put the bird up? And yeah, yeah, they, yeah, 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 and yeah. um, and they just get absorbed in this sort of illusory manifestation mm. before their eyes. And then one day, one of the people he gets he gets let free. Yeah. He gets to to leave the cave, so he like gradually crawls his way out of the cave, mm. and he gets he start he sees in the distance there's this blinding light, you know. He starts mm. working his way towards the blinding light. Oh, and he's he stands up and he's out. He's he comes out of the cave, and he looks around and he can't see anything. It's just white light mm. all around him. He can't understand anything, and but then gradually his eyes, he starts to adjust to what he sees, mm. and he looks up and he sees the sun. You know, he's mesmerized. It's beautiful, and he looks around and he sees these forms that he's seen that are projected in their real form mm, so for the yeah. first time he sees a tree with the bark mm. and the shadows and the browns and the leaves coming off and mm. he sees oh, that tree has a, one of those birds in it you know mm. and this bird isn't just a shadow of a bird it's it's got blue feathers yeah, yeah. and it's and it's completely detailed so he's just becomes mesmerized by this new reality he's like I've got to go tell the boys back yeah, in the yeah. cave you know <laughs> so he like crawls back down Quick, quick, crawls down, gets back to the cave, it's dark again. He takes him a little while to readjust to the darkness inside the cave, you know. And he says, he starts talking to his friends, like, You don't understand what I've just seen. This, what we see in before us, is just an illusion. Mm. It's just a fake. It's, it's not real. It's not the real reality. Mm. I've been, I've seen the real reality. It's beautiful. Mm. And he starts describing the feathers and the bark and the leaves. And all his friends, they just start looking at him, like, what has happened to Ollie? He started, started, talking about his, he started talking about this meditation and his <laughs> Kundalini awakening, and now he wants to drop his computer science and do full up. What's happened yeah, to Ollie? It, it seems mad. Yeah. <laughs> he used to come out and party with us, he used to do the bodybuilding. What's going on? Yeah, you know? it's so it's, for just change of direction. Really. But like the Plato's back to the analogy, it's like, oh, yeah, the people end up killing him. Mm. They just re- totally reject him and they end up like, we, look, he's talking too much about this real mm. reality. We're happy watching the project, shadow, the yeah. shadow reality. So it's like um, this spiritual realization. Sometimes you, you, you get a glimpse into this higher reality. Mm. But then when you try and bring it back to people that are still operating on the level of reality you previously operated at, mm. they can't relate because yeah. they haven't had the experience and... Um, it's kind of a story of rejection. You kind of you can be rejected from that. Yeah. So it's it's relevant. So you learn about Plato. That was yeah. a little aside, but it is. I love it's that. Re- to be fair, yeah, it's really yeah. It's, for me, just like I learned that allegory. Yeah. Allegory is a story that you can learn a meaning from. Mm. That's what. But it was just before I moved in the ashram. I was studying art, and they they gave us this an al- allegory in, in in the art class, and I was going through similar things to you, and I was just like. Oh my god, that's me! Yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, I've been outside the gate. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's yeah. like so. Like people can relate to that for sure. Mm. So you were learning about Plato, Aristotle. Yeah, um, all of it. Yeah, all of it. I can't. Re- I can't remember the philosophers' names now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all these kind of different, you know, schools of thought, ideas. Mm. Um, Are you was talking about some bull? Yeah, yeah. There was like there was even like moral uh, um, philosophy, you know, to do like the difference between um, lying and bullshitting. That was actually the name of. A, a yeah, there was a paper. This this person uh, was wrote down. actually. Yeah, I can't remember the the uh, like the person who wrote it, but it, you know, in, in essence, it's like you know, what's what's worse, um, you know, because when you lie you don't have a you have a regard for the truth because you know you're you're actively going against it when when you're bullshitting then you don't actually have any kind just of making stuff regard up. for the truth you know it doesn't matter to you so this kind of so morally credit yeah because we assign people like cre- we value people who value truth or credibility but the bullshitter doesn't even like have a regard for what is true what is not it's just kind of um you know what he says could be true could not be true it's quite interesting like what you just said there we value truth yeah we value truth Truth, yeah yeah. like um and that's ultimately 
what the Vedic texts yeah. are completely concerned yeah. about is understanding the truth of reality, mm. understanding the real situation mm. that we find ourselves in. Yeah. It's interesting. And by aligning yourself with that truth, then people will value what you have to say more. Mm. You know, maybe. <laughs> anyway, that's a kind of a side. So, mm. isn't it? Or, yeah. <laughs> sorry, you just got me thinking. I like the I like the concept of um, because in the Atma Lounge last week, Rohini spoke. Um, I don't, we were speaking about this already. I don't think so. So Rohini spoke about like um. He was talking about how every single person has their own relative truth. They have their own version mm-hmm. of truth. Mm. So like, um, your truth is one thing, my truth is mm. another thing. And I, if I, if you, it's, if I, <laughs> how do I even explain this? <laughs> if I disagree with your truth, then you're wrong. And if you disagree with my truth, then I'm wrong. And it causes a conflict or causes friction. Whereas, um, well, I was thinking about that. Okay, so like, he was saying it's good to understand things from someone else's truth, mm. someone else's perspective. And when you think like that, then there's less friction. Mm. And I was thinking, yeah, because the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedic texts are about really aligning yourself with truth, aligning yourself with reality, mm. the more the more your truth is in line with the absolute truth, is in line with the ultimate truth of mm. reality, um, the less friction there is. Yes, yeah, so true, actually. Because someone comes up with their opinion... And you feel quite see, comfortable. Yeah. You you say. It. Well, I was gonna say like because you because it's like um, not like a how do you describe it? It's like a higher truth mm. and just a subjective truth. It's objective, yes. Yeah. Then it means that you know you can actually understand where they're coming from more. Mm. You know, rather than do you know what I mean? Like it's like your yeah because the whole truth. Yeah includes all of yeah. the small truths exactly yeah That's so yeah. by seeing the whole seeing everything in perspective of the whole yeah it yeah. makes it makes see things in the right perspective yeah but it is interesting because i found when i first came to the ashram i would i would come at people like quite angrily just like oh blah, 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 blah. angry 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 like this was my truth like i mm. lived in an angry world mm. and i'd bring that towards the monks and towards the devotees and they just wouldn't react. Like there wouldn't be a conflict. They'd just be. They just look at me like, okay, you can be angry. Like they would detach from it because, mm. and it made me stop. I was like, whoa, mm. oh, wait. These people aren't reacting to my anger. They're not. They're 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 on a higher platform than that anger. And then it just made me reassess the anger and mm. made me break it down and deal yeah, with it conducive yeah so people that are on that level of consciousness are, are actually uplifting those that come in contact with them mm. just because it's like a different type of interaction yeah, yeah like, so much like people mention that on the street as well when they meet monks and devotees on the street they're like wow you guys have a different type of energy you've got mm. a different kind of aura a different kind of that's your energy mm. but like it's like a different way of interacting with the world mm. Mm. So truth, that that was a, that was a nice was. little spin off, but um, so you're in uni, and this is when I met you, basically, isn't it? Like, pretty much, yeah. I was in uni. I I, I joined a meditation society. I was really like, you know, because by this point, like, the all, all these experiences were kind of less intense, but I was still going on ongoing thing, mm. um, and yeah, we did. I remember we did like um. Also, at that, this point, I was really quite introspective and almost like uh, surrendering, you know, or I don't know, what, surrendering to the kind of, I don't know what it was, just like a higher force, you know, in life mm. that, you know, you know, I, I know I knew I needed some guidance and mm. like, I knew there was some kind of uh, inner pull. I just mm. didn't know where. And so I was kind of surrendering to this, you know, um, and yes, yeah, so I anyway I joined this meditation society and we did mantra meditation in uni. Really? Uh, what kind of mantras? Um it was different ones. I can't exactly remember ones, maybe like oh, I can't remember. Um Shiva or like Ganesh, you know, different kind of mm. um 
I'm gonna say Hindu mantras. Um, Ganapati, um, something like that. Yeah, I like all that stuff. Yeah, and I, I, it's I, good vibes. I, I liked it. Yeah, I, 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 I never thought I'd do something like that before. Well, yeah, last week we were talking about Gopal, hmm. we about his story, and he he came across a mantra like a hmm. Shiva. Hmm. Um, no, yeah. or Shiva. Yeah. So, so like, it's interesting how we come through these different mantras. And anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, it's Om fine. is Om is a mantra everyone knows. Yeah, Om. Should we do a couple of Oms? Oh. Is it right? the the way to do? It, there is a way to do it. Actually, it's like ah, uh, like oh. And yeah, actually, yeah, you're supposed yeah. to feel the vibration go up. Yeah. Like that, and then it's supposed to go like, like vibrate. Like it's A U M. Yeah, yeah. But I've heard someone describe it as unstruck sound. Hmm. So like when we speak, there's a there's a there's a voice box that's striking, getting struck by a vocal cord. Hmm. So it's struck sound, but arm is sound which emanates from within. Yeah. There's no striking. Exactly. It's just a vibration. I actually remember I used to I used to do that as well a little bit because I was feeling on these things inside, and um, oh. yeah, I, I could I could feel all these kind of vibrations going on inside, like on a like intense level. Mm. And I was almost having kind of like almost like miss psych, you know psychic experiences with with it you know like really feeling the vibrations and yeah it was it was really like strange mm. strange time oh yeah where were we everything universe yeah, you yeah know, no, meditation you're a meditation society mantra we do mantras I liked it and I was like okay yeah like I want to do more of this. And the the person who was running this the the meditation society, he um, happened to mention, oh, the, yeah, the Hari Krishnas, they're in Cardiff Bay. They they do like, meditation. Sounds exotic. Yeah, and I was like, oh, oh, the Hari Krishnas. Did I you don't know, did you know yeah. anything about Hari Krishnas? Before? I I just thought, oh, who are these people? Because you come from Watford, that's got the biggest and I didn't Hari even, Krishna temple. I didn't even know about. The, the Hare Krishna is until I moved to Wales even though the centre is in Watford yeah. yeah this is the UK HQ it was a house that was um, donated by George, George Harrison. Harrison yeah Jinx touch wood <laughs> um yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> no what were we saying George sorry. Harrison the Beatles um yeah, yeah so the Hare Krishna is there they're in Cardiff Bay yeah, yeah. Even that's quite exotic it's like oh the bay I, I thought I didn't no know no one goes think, out though. to the bay like I didn't I didn't know what to think though because you know like I kind of heard they might do like dancing or some kind of things like that and really? I didn't know what to expect to be honest. So I was like, you know what? You know, they seem like you know, they're probably quite happy and you know, I just did some mantra meditation and it seems good to me. So Wait. I thought, hmm, I might I think I'll check it out, you know, like why not? Did you, you know, ever I, meet the boys on the street or I don't think not to my knowledge. She just came to it straight through the mantra. Yeah. That's that's rare. I don't know, yeah. Whoa. So maybe I did but I not, not not that I can remember okay and um, yeah anyway I think I came like the next week to a Friday uh, mantra meditation program I think I was there yeah and I, th- I think I remember that and yeah it was just like and when, Alex Winter yeah Alex it's back in there shout was, out to Alex shout out <laughs> Alex Winter yeah they were good times didn't they oh they were like, I've got a lot of nostalgia remember nostalgia yeah we was coming Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three years ago now. oh yeah over three years ago Can't four, four yeah. years ago but yeah Take place. Mm. but yeah like yeah I just remember going and I was like wow there's there's something you know special about these people and, and this meditation because um, it really just like felt you know there, there's something quite deep about this mm. something quite homely as well like mm. okay yeah this is I'm looking for this. Home. This is why I'm looking. For. Yeah, like the, I don't know what it is, but there's something about this which is special. It's familiar. Yeah. It's like natural. It's oh yeah, yeah. It's like you're in the place where you, where you remember that you should be. I don't know. Yeah, you got it. I remember because very yeah. early on you were saying, yeah, you know, the more, the more I surrender to this mantra, the more I give my attention and energy to this mantra, the deeper the experience. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Like these that. are quite advanced things yeah. to be said. You know, like in terms of like yeah. most people are just like, oh, I just go there and I'll have a vegan meal and uh, talk to someone and go home. 
you know, like, but you were like, yeah, I'm surrendering to the mantra, you know, I, just, <laughs> I remember looking at you like, what is this guy? <laughs> like, he's like some other thing, you talk about my chakras, <laughs> mantra, as I said, <laughs> whoa, this guy's on, he's on some other, he's on the Kundalini program. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I just, you know, I just thought, you know, my, you know, this life is clearly meant for more. I want to know what this is, you know, what, what is going on, you know, really kind of, yeah, go deep into it. Mm. You know, and and yeah, you know, like just after like going to these meditation mantra meditation, you know, you you know, you just you just feel so uplifted, like so so uplifted. So we've had a good shower. So happy, you know, <laughs> yeah. just so like just wow. There's you know, there's you know, there's almost like no problems anymore. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, there's a sense of real peace that comes, mm. and you know, I'd, I'd cycle back to my uni accommodation. And you know, just you know, chanting in my head or out loud, you know, just on the way, just like <laughs> just in bliss, yeah, <laughs> just really, and then, like you're just really happy. And I just keep, I keep going every week, you know, week after week. Like this is, yeah, just really getting a kind of uh, taste for mm. the chanting. And then that's because that's where we started. I remember then you you finally came to a Sunday program, mm. and the Sunday program, the Friday, the Friday. Kirtan is quite chilled, candles, nice, relax. And the Sunday one is when that dancing comes out. Because mm. you said, oh, I heard they do dancing, I'm not sure about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But the Sunday program, you dance, and it's like this interesting dancing in lines, and there's people are putting their hands in the air, there's some other element to it. Like it's, okay, this is now, there's, a, there's another layer to this that's mm. getting unveiled. Yeah. And it becomes more kind of, but it's quite devotional. Na- it's natural more, though. It's, it's, it's not like it's not like artificially. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. It's all just yeah. kind of. Um, it's good fun, like yeah. You know, it's really you know, people just really get into it. You know, yeah, and it's but on really Sunday nice. we have a feast. Oh yeah. Every Sunday, if you're listening, Cardiff Bay, we have a feast, and it's a feast. It is a feast. <laughs> like two types of subjis, which is like a curries. Two types of curries: rice, dal maybe like some chapatis, pakoras, puris, like chutney and like sweet, a couple of sweets. Like it's a feast and it keeps coming. Keeps yeah, coming. Or you can eat. Okay. And I remember me and you were sat next to each other at the feast and like um, you, you were into it, spiritual meditation and you just sort of looked at me and you were like, so, is this a religion? <laughs> <laughs> and like, is this a religion? And I was like, uh, <laughs> Kind of, <laughs> I don't know, because it's not like religion. It's not as really, we know. Though, yeah. It's, it's not, not like <laughs> sitting in church with a cup but of it tea. It seems like it, but it's not. It's like there's some there's that element to it, but it's it's almost more than religion. Yeah, it's it's, it's like more. It's it's really deep. It's like you know, it's it's very universal. Mm. Um, you know, and it's uh, yes. Yeah, it's spiritual. That's what we often say on the street. You know, it's not. It's not religion. It's actually spiritual teachings, because mm. it's yeah, it's directly to do with the, the real self yeah. rather than like you know certain external um, uh, rituals, rituals, and practices. And it's more about really awakening up this this self within mm. us, or who yeah. we are actually. Yeah, yeah. and and it's like gradual revealing of that yeah it's like, yeah. A, it's like a whole process in the same yeah it's tangible it's, that's the one thing it's tangible mm. you know it's like the the proof of the pudding is in eating you know you you know by actually just experiencing it you know it's not like a belief you know oh I believe this you believe that no it's like you know you try try the the chant try the mantra meditation and it you know even just you know after one session yeah. You, know, you feel so uplifted let alone you know more and more yeah. you know, it's, it's a real real difference in consciousness yeah once it's real it, difference because you do the kirtan and the the kirtan is like a espresso shot you know mm. you get that hit of like whoa that was like a powerful yeah, spiritual definitely. experience but then yeah. after a while you start to try the like the on the beads yeah. like the chanting in your own personal time they call it japa and japa means to like quietly murmur mm. something like that is the translation so like you start doing the japa and that's like your cup of coffee you know mm. it's not such a hit mm. but it's more of slow release mm. 
So like um, by chanting the japa, you start to sort of elevate your perspective mm. overall. You know, like you have a hot, if you have an espresso shot, then you, poof, doo, 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 doo. Mm. If you have a coffee, you're just like a bit more aware, mm. you know. So the japa is more like that. It's more of a, so you start introducing that in mm. and that's when it starts to level up. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you can like regularly go around the beads once yeah, right. every day, you know, you do that for a week or two weeks, you start to see a tangible thing. Oh, right? yeah. And then you just start increasing it more and more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what, that's the beautiful thing about it. It's like an ever expanding, yeah. It's like a, it's like a lotus flower unfurling. Yeah. Like it's like you start to realize reality. You start to line yourself up with truth, like mm. what we said. Mm. And you start to see life in that truthful way and you start to interact. Mm in line with reality and it's it makes your life like sublime yeah it makes your life like um just real you know yeah. like oh yeah yeah because you know before it's like yeah we're bodybuilding yeah but i don't feel yeah. why why are you doing that you know yeah. why are you you know that's such an important question to ask is like why yeah you know why why do you want that why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? Mm. And then if you if you pit you if you keep going back, you know you can see it's like, you know, we're we're looking for, um, yeah, we're looking for happiness one, mm. and two we're looking for, um, love connection connection yeah, relationship bingo yeah love so it's like that, and and that's what yoga means connect yeah connection yeah yoke yeah it's knowledge yeah knowledge you know who am I where am I going what is this what is this body you know what is this world yeah and like uh, and that's where things really start connecting for me like meeting the people who are actually living this lifestyle mm. you know practicing it not believing but actually doing practical things living the life um, walking the talk and you know that reflected in their consciousness their humility and their genuine um uh, care in the genuine like uh, understanding and uh, also they what I found is like they ha they have this ability to speak to your heart yeah you know yeah. especially the more advanced these practitioners are yeah. they'll say things that resonate with you on a way that you don't use you're not used to it's mm. like wow this is it's what I needed to hear mm. you know like they're saying it's like they're speaking to you from a place that's that's quite deep you know mm. and that's once once you start surrounding yourself with those people, it's like I want to be like this. Mm. I want to I want to speak from a place that's deep, and I want to have an impact on others' life mm. and help benefit them, help mm. elevate them. And I, I'm sure that's how what made you eventually move into mm. the ashram, right? It's yeah. just like I want to be like this. Yeah, I want to yeah. practice this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to share this. I want to. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's pretty nice. So nice. Yeah. yeah, this was nice, Ollie. Thanks for coming on the podcast. No problem. We want to do more like this. Get yeah. to know the boys, get to know the girls, get to know everyone who's into Krishna and beyond, you know. So, um, just hearing that type of thing is quite uplifting, you know. Oh, yeah. It's good sound yeah. vibrations. It is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we take it for granted, don't we? Like, mm. the, the kind of, I mean, we not necessarily take it for granted, but you could do, like, you know, these discourses which... Which which do actually go deep, mm -hmm. you know? Because like I don't know what like people generally talk about, but normally it's like oh this this sport that sport he did this you did that, but you know this yeah it's like external it can be, it can, it can conf be conflict super, yeah and it's yeah it's about union rather than conflict actually mm. right like back to yoga we're back to yeah we're back with with practicing Krishna consciousness is about becoming united mm. instead of conflict we don't like you you don't like us mm. like war like we're seeing what's happening in the world you know that conflict's heavy it's heavy to see but that's it's like a symptom of it's like a it's like a bigger version of what's happening with most of us mm. on a small version mm. conflict anger yeah. hate envy yeah. greed yeah. like our I want a bigger house. I want to increase yeah. my land. I want to, it's this kind of mentality that we have. Yeah. You know, I want a big house with a lot of land yeah. for myself. Yeah. There's a, is that zoomed up? Is, I can't remember who said it, but it's like, you know, 
you know there might have been a lot of diseases in previous like times you know like um plagues and things like that you know physical diseases mm. um and you know no no doubt there's you know there's still things like that you know going on and even with the coronavirus but actually the the real disease is actually the disease in the consciousness mm. you know that we have you know so many ang- people with anxiety depression you know different things you know mm. so like for you know and like like you mentioned greed anger envy or these qualities in the mind you know mm. for, and for the real kind of um spiritual process actually purifies these you know it heals the, heals yeah here's yeah, all these kind about of healing yeah. you know like this is the oh yeah so it, much it it yeah it cleanses it helps you see things as they are it helps you get back to your natural condition and really yeah. enjoy you know it's yeah super powerful anyway it's lovely we're going to go out into Oxford tomorrow which is today if you listen to this the day it came out which probably not um, <laughs> wish us luck thanks for listening Ollie. not listening <laughs> talking that's right <laughs> thanks for having me on it thanks for being my friend as well <laughs> Hi Krishna. Hi Krishna. Bye everyone. Madashi Krishna, Jaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gradha, Sri Matadi, Gol Matadina, Madashi Shiva, 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 Shiva,